Caliber here, and this is channel update for what is it? November? No, this is December now, isn't it? Well, there's a couple of things that are going on here. Uh, we've got some changes, and I'm going to adjust this just slightly because it got a little, a little uh, um, messed up there. <clears throat> uh, first off, we have some swag. This is uh, the first Patreon reward. Excalibur Zone Gaming, and it's a Commander Deck Tech Mug. You can see down here, we've got our nice little Magic Gathering is copyright Richard, Wizards of the Coast, so rich reserved, because I've got Magic Gathering swag on there. Um, this is not stuff that's really for sale. Um, it's my, my patron really liked the splash I used for my Deck Tech for Bruna, so that's why he's getting one of these things. Um... And uh, we also have $106 that we got from Patreon last month. You can see the Patreon page. I'm going to go over to my lovely spreadsheet that I'm keeping track of everything. So far, we have... Uh, um, I'm going to be giving about $32 to charity. It's $31.57. And uh, we are chugging along pretty well we've got 111 due to come in this month but we have to make sure that it all comes through um, we've got four patrons and I'm going to shout them out now let's zip on down we have Ruben Sanchez Brian Slick Steve Frajanic and Snowduck you guys are all awesome um, and uh, you should have gotten your rewards by now they're either in the patreon um, monument creation or they have been uh, mentioned online or whatever so I'm giving you an official shout out and a channel update this time too um, also we have started the Twitter um, hall in our patreon monument and we've got a lot more building to go on because we have a YouTube hall let me go over to my followers we've got YouTube we've got Facebook Google Plus uh, Tumblr um, player.me and a couple other things we have some uh, milestone subscribers let me get I have to grab my uh, 500th um, GDM official so let's see here let's copy that and I'm going to make sure I put this on a f milestones click there home paste value there we go so we have um, Chupa Mobile for our 100th, After Dark Apps for our 200th, Hyper Border and Breezy Has Style for our 300, uh, Blorf Games for our 400, and GDM Official for our 500. Now my Twitter follower count keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down like a yo-yo on a roller coaster that's been uh, smoking weed and crack and all this other stuff that's so been doing drugs, you know. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much how things are going with the follower count on Twitter. Um, we've hit 500. We're currently sitting at 506, I believe. Do, 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 do. Yes, 506 users. Let me just double check and refresh. Do, 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 do. Yeah, nobody is um, unfollowed. Unfortunately, GDM Official unfollowed me um, shortly after she got her shout outs. I, I don't know why people do that. I'm active, so uh, if you don't like it, then don't follow me if you don't want anything else. Um, Player.me is a new website, social media that's been patterned after Facebook, um, that's been added, eh, they, they've added several things that Facebook needs. I currently have 16 followers there, and I'm thinking about um, putting first followers down, but I really can't gauge with some of these sites, so... Uh, we're going to give up on doing that. As for um, YouTube, let's go to the tubes, and we're going to click on that. And we're going to upload, go to the upload thing. We just uploaded two new videos today. Let's see here, I've got 159 subscribers currently on the tubes. Let me go to community. Um, Alice Moore is number 100 for YouTube, so she gets a wonderful uh, statue. 
I've been giving everybody a statue if they've followed me. And they get the uh, um, the 100 mark. Even though my uh, um, little informational thing says, hey, you only um, get a statue at 500, all all those people get it. So let's get back here and check my YouTubes. We're going to see, yep, we are up to date there. 159 subscribers, not too bad. Not the best, but not too bad. I'm really working on it. We have uh, another giveaway update going again because people are not contacting me on uh, the giveaway. I ended the main um, Excalibur Zone YouTube giveaway because uh, uh, just not getting the followers and I wasn't going to lower all the prizes down to within reach of uh, 150 and then 200 and 300 because uh, I was just a little bit cheap on the games and I didn't want to do that so I ended up giving away uh, the Munchkin to an online um, game on Twitter that we did a, a, a tweet the rules kind of thing with uh, Steve Jackson Games and um, a bunch of other people I can't remember their names uh, Board Game Duel, IB Villa or Villa if you want to go that way and I can't remember everybody uh, let me take a look I want to give them proper shout outs too because they were judges go to messages so <clears throat> alright so we had Indie Game Alliance we had Board Game Duel we had IB Villa we had myself and uh, we had Steve Jackson Games and actually it was uh, uh, Rhea Friesen who, from Steve Jackson Games that did the judging and we got uh, um, two winners, one from the UK and I'm trying to find that person uh, Go Haves on Games they, uh, they won and then the other one was um, I think Genito Games, but let's see here. Nope, it's a uh, Mick W. So let me see who Mick W is. NYC underscore W. At NYCW. That's Mick Wiestrowski. I'm going to butcher that name. Uh, Vietrowski Vietrowski I think Vietrowski um, is the closest I can come to properly pronouncing it uh, I'm not good with a lot of foreign names mm -hmm -hmm. anyway there's that uh, we put out two new videos today um, this being December 2nd so let me just jump back to the video manager and I'll tell you the names the first one um, was D D Tuesdays. I've been doing a Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition series and we go through the entire campaign. Um so we put out episode two of that today. And then uh we have Command of Deck Tech Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker out today as well. So you have that. Um I am attempting to do starting today an indie game a day all month. And uh today's date you'll find out, but that will be actually what needs to be done. Um, that'll be the third video for today. This is the fourth video, and there's going to be uh, probably um, a little bit more informational stuff here as well. So one of the things that I've been doing, um, if anybody has been following around, I've been working on my Die Civilization board game, and that's a board game based on dice and uh, collecting dice and all that stuff. So um, I have prototype boards here. Uh, that came in the mail from Artsco. Let me just open this. Get them out. It's noisy. I'm sorry. So, we can get rid of this. Yeah. Get rid of that. We'll open this up. And pull these out. Now, they were photo cards um, that I printed on because the photo cards were nice and inexpensive and uh, also gave me um, stuff that I can use for Patreon rewards when I um, do my postcards and stuff. I've been doing regular postcards, but I've been using photo cards instead um, because they come with envelopes and I can mail them to you and everybody will be happy, happy, happy uh, to get those if you uh, give it that level on Patreon. So let's open this up. They really did a bang up job getting this to me. 
Um, I was really surprised at um, the quality of these things. We can get rid of that. And now here we go. Um, now this is for Die Civilization. Let me pull up my monitor so I can see what's going on. And they are on photo stock. So they're all the same thing. They're, they're player aids. So I've got more than enough for two people. And I can write notes on the backs and stuff like that. But these are actually printed on Fujifilm. Um, up here is a production warehouse where you keep track of how many production points between turns. This is your research stockpile where you keep track of which dice you've taken from turn to turn, your failure collection, and then your defense that you have if you if you do it. There's some things that are going to be changing from this, but overall this is a very, very nice. It's got a nice matte finish, and I'm really pleased with the results. So if I do any more game pieces like this, they're probably going to go on um, photo stock for my prototypes because I can I can whip up something like this and um, Inkscape really quick and uh, take care of that. Um, it also comes with a coupon so you can get 35 percent off all personalized photo cards photo gifts and yeah you just saw my name oh well I will blur that out. Uh, let me uh, set this aside because I'm going to show you this this is part of uh, the game design stuff too and I'm all about designing game content and designing games I believe is part of that so here we go these are also um, prototypes here's a nice back yes they are custom cards and these are prototypes so you can see prototype prototype die civilization and here is the front yes you can finally see some of the components um, at least initial components that I'm looking at whipped it up really quickly in Inkscape and this has uh, um, all the tech text that you need uh, the uh, maximum and minimum uh, victory points the name of the technology um, how many production points it requires uh, and then right down here is going to be a pretty picture um, this might change we'll have to see also, I have been mentioning um, other things. Here are achievements, and these achievements will be used for end of game scoring. They're surprise bonus abilities. You're, you'll be given the ability to check them out. And then finally, wonders. And wonders look a lot like technologies, but um, they are mainly you need a certain number of uh, points and you need a certain number of technologies. Of different colors and victory points and uh, the victory points are what you get for completing your wonder um, and uh, I'm de debating whether it's um, each time you get one of these you get this or if you just complete it you get this or, or whatever and then the name of the, the wonders goes down here and then there's a pretty picture and all that now, this is very very rough now there are seven wonders in the deck it's a 54 card deck there are seven achievements in the deck and Aha, uh -huh. this is the fun part. There are, oh, sorry, that's that's actually tech level down there in the little um, star. And uh, your victory points are based on the tech level. So in any case, there are 40 of these guys. And uh, they're all identical right now. It's prototype. And I did it this way so that I could um, use a pen and write in stuff, write a power on there or something, or use a pencil and write on there. Um, these are smooth, uh, smooth playing cards, and they actually work very, very well. Um, I'm very pleased with the results. There were no printing errors at all. And in actuality, it looks like I've got a technology number text right there yeah so um, we're gonna have set icons and stuff like that uh, because I plan on doing expansions because there's only um, five tech levels and there are ten techs per level so uh, there's plenty of room to add a lot more technologies that uh, are representative of the first um, one through five ages of human history um, and that's if I decide to just go straight with what's real. I mean, I could go and make it fantasy-based. I can make it space-based, future-based, whatever I want. But these came out really, really nice. I'm really pleased. 
Artsco did a really good job and now I have custom di um, custom cards with which to test my games with and that makes me very happy um, one of the things that changed be between making these prototypes and developing these is there's a wonder number missing and uh, there's also the die that the wonder grants you that's missing um, so what is that for? Well, it's for determining turn order. That's the wonder number, and you get a free die for um, for randomly selecting which wonder you want. And I'm debating whether you do a draft or not. So we'll have to see. That is all up in the air still. I'm in the middle of testing whether technologies work properly or not. So that is pretty much die civilization. Um, the game that I've been talking about on my blog at least and now I've talked about on a channel update in terms of uh, series for my YouTube channel which is part of the channel update um, one the Tekken SMP adventures and two the survival Sundays have both been retired because um, the stability of the uh, the stability of the Tekken SMP server has been suspect for the past couple of months and mods are not logging in or checking on it, admins aren't checking on it, and I can't get a hold of anybody to keep it up. Sorry, just getting a sip. And, uh, well, we need to find some way to uh, fill that in. So instead of the Tech and S&P adventures on Tuesdays, that's where D&D &D Tuesdays come. And on Sunday morning, I think I'm going to do a retro series, also D&D &D based. Uh, I'm probably going to run with Pool of Radiance and go through uh, a playthrough of Pool of Radiance from back in the 80s. That's going to be awesome. How do I know it's from the 80s? Well, I lived it. And uh, Gold Box Series came out when the Commodore 64 was around, and it was out before I got out of high school. Because I remember Easter break, my best friend Joe and I um, tag teamed playing the game. That wasn't really multiplayer, so we saved our game, then loaded up um, Joe's game, then saved his game that loaded up my game and we played through um, and found secrets that we never would have found by ourselves it was a pretty awesome time so I've been working on getting DOSBox set up to run all of those old um, SSI games I've got the complete collection on DVD well on CD I'm gonna have to check to make sure that that stuff still works because CDs degrade quite a bit in any case there's that um, I'm working on getting PlayStation 3 up here in my office and uh, getting an Elgato so that I can record games off of that so we'll see like the random Tetris game throw up or whatever where I start from scratch and see how far I can get before the game ends that kind of deal um, without restarting or respawning so to speak um, in terms of other um, series let's see here uh, we still have what's the combo coming out on Wednesdays we have Excalibur plays FTL on Thursdays, um, Excalibur's Vanilla Adventures on Fridays, um, Friday Night Magic Reports have pretty much gone the way of the back burner for now because uh, I have been playing Friday Night Magic, but I'm going to uh, start doing um, some other magic based game there, maybe look at Synergies, eh, something, I have to figure that out, um, but the Saturday Friday Night Magic Reports are going to change to something different. Um, we have an indie game let's play for each day from now until, let's see here, oh, not that long, only until the 19th, at which point um, we'll be going through more of our queue. Uh, we have a tournament coming up on the 20th of December. It's a, a commander tournament. I'm going to be a part of that. Uh, let's see here. And uh, this Sunday is going to be D&D, &D, so we'll see a D&D &D session report coming up on Monday. Other than that, there is not much else going on. I've got Baldur's Gate slated for Tuesdays uh, for some time. Maybe I'll do a Tuesday and Saturday Baldur's Gate to replace to get through Baldur's Gate quicker. I think that might be a good idea. Um, and for the most part, we've got winter vacation coming up here for my son. Uh, his daycare uh, preschool is going um, to close down with the area schools, so I'm going to 
be figuring out what I can do and when I can do it. So there might be some lull during that time. I'm just getting over a cold, so that's why I've got my drink here and uh, I've got cough drops sit on the standby. Actually, I need to get one because I feel some coughing coming on. So just grab one. Okay. Nice meant to lift this cough drop. Pop that in. Um, I've got a quick review of my friend's game, Battle Snails, coming up soon. Um, you may have seen that uh, um, Edo Baraf is uh, running his own channel with uh, three minute reviews, three to five minutes or so. So I'm going to be putting Battle Snails up on that. You know before anybody else. So um, this is a game that I know not many people have heard of because my friend Tad Watson has created it. I did a quick review, a text-based review of it, and uh, it comes with these handy-dandy um, deck of cards, uh, one for the snails, one for the animals, and uh, we're going to be giving away two sets, two complete sets, including instructions. Um, I, Tad and I have been talking, we might be uh, um, working on the game to make it a little bit more um, accessible or easier to get a hold of and possibly make it uh, um, print on demand or something like that. We're, we're, we're in the talking stages. He wants his game to, to live on and he wants to be able to produce it. Um, so we're going to give, we're going to do some talking and see if we can't find some ways to take care of that for him uh, that's a little bit uh, maintenance free because he's got a lot on his plate uh, for his job and school and stuff like that so um, he's going back to school for more education gotta love that so we are going to see what's up with that um, I just recently got these wonderful little packages here in the mail <laughs> um, I know I just put a cough drop in because I needed to keep from coughing but maybe I will do a taste test to see how this beef jerky tastes and you'll be able to see my eyes roll up and me turn into a shark and devour the entire pack so we'll have to see how that works it's uh from my friends over at jerky xp i don't have ah oh, here it is it's their sticker right here um see them on twitter uh subscribe to jerky xp on twitter follow them uh get some deals those guys make some good jerky i tried their teriyaki already and uh, I've been putting off trying the spicy in the desert fire because my bowels just don't work that way. So maybe next month I will get one of each of those packs and try them. We'll have to see. Uh, new acquires. Uh, I got a new copy of Dungeon Roll. And I got Munchkin Loot Letter. And here I thought it was put out by Steve Jackson Games. But actually... It's put out by Alderac. Um, quite interesting. Thank you, Rhea. Uh, Steve Jackson Games, of course, uh, owns the Munchkin um, property, and uh, AEG owns Love Letter, so they got together and they made Loot Letter, and I can't see anything in there because of the bag. So I'm going to be doing an unboxing video of both of these games pretty soon. I also have two things I want to unbox while I'm sitting here. Let me see if I can find them. Wow. I did find them. So here we go. It's a minifigure. Uh, Minecraft minifigure, actually. Yeah, me and Minecraft, huh? So let me go ahead and open this up. Get this plastic off here. and Or tape. That's what it is. We could have a Steve with a pickaxe, a creeper, an enderman, a skeleton, a Steve with golden armor, an iron golem. A uh, snow golem, a dyed sheep, a horse, a cow, a cat, and a zombie villager. Wow, so we're going to see what these are. It has one figure each. And, oh, that's like candy. So there we go, we opened up this box. Let's see what's inside. We have a Steve with a golden helmet. Not to be confused with my friend Steve for Janik. So we we'll put him over here with my bigger Zisto and uh, or Zisto and uh, my bigger Steve question mark. I still have to figure out the sizes of all the surface areas of these bigger figures. There we go. I'll grab one. They're the ones with the keychains, 
And let me just alt tab to that so I can see. So here we go. We got Steve. Come on. There we go. There's a Steve, and I've got a zombie pigman um, as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use stickers and put my Minecraft skin on him for uh, for the sheer fun of it. So the second one we have uh, another one of these nice little plastic things that we can't see. Too bad they don't articulate. That would be just so cool. I would love to get. Let's see here. What I'd like to get the horse or a cat. That's what I'd like to find in here. A horse or a cat. An Enderman would be cool too. No, oh, my fan blew something off of uh, my printer over there. You probably saw it fall. I didn't. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. it's a snow golem. Now that's actually pretty cute. I don't really mind that at all. So, snow golem. Maybe I should paint parts of my desk white that match the shape of his uh, foot there, and then we can uh, <laughs> um, make it look like he's been walking all over the place. All right, so that's about it. I'm looking around. I'm not seeing anything new that I can talk about. Um, so that's a channel update. Everything's going according to plan. I've got some awesome patrons. They are really kicking butt. Um, I'm going to be removing the charity part from my Patreon, pa Patreon campaign um, because I've been getting crapped on by people about giving stuff to charity. Yeah. Um, doesn't make me happy to even think about it. Uh, but I was just sitting here, then all of a sudden, hey, you know, that's against the law and stuff like that. And I, to make things so much easier... I'm going to reduce my milestone goals um, to take the charity part out of it. I'm going to remove the charity aspect out of it, and um, I'm going to advertise the Patreon page as supporting me and only me, and I'm still going to give probably half of what I get from Patreon to charity. Now that means that I'm getting, um, my milestones are going to be lower than what I want them to be. But the the cool thing is I'll have less people jumping on my head and crapping in my Cheerios. So that is the way I'm going to be doing that. So expect my Patreon page to be changing very soon, probably within the next day or two, where I remove all the other charity-related um, stuff out of there. Um, I'm going to keep, of course, the first quarter goals, as I stated, that... Uh, October, uh, November, and December are going to all be one-half net funds to charity because that is the way I I put it, and that's the way I want it. If anybody who is my patron now wants to go ahead and cancel, that's fine. I fully understand and agree with your viewpoint that um, if you went in with the charity aspect in mind, um, that's cool, but... I'm still going to be giving half of whatever I get from Patreon to charity. I'm just not going to be uh, uh, shooting my mouth off about it because I don't need the government jumping down my throat saying that I'm not a charitable organization and I'm going to take penalties. And I'm not going to... Uh, um, or a venture capitalist or anything like that. And I'm not going to sit here and let um, people randomly on the web just start crapping and making my day worse by... Um, making it seem like they're threatening to report me to the IRS or something because I'm doing things illegally. So, all money is going to be going to me um, from this moment forward. Um, as soon as I change the page, it's going to be that statement. Everything is going to um, go to me, and whatever I get, half of that's going to go to charity because that's the way I roll. That's the way I want to roll. My charity list is, if you don't know what it is, um, we have, oh, come on and load, we have um, the Amyotrophic Lateral, Scler Lateral Sclerosis Association, or ALSA. We have Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America, uh, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, um, Epilepsy Foundation of America, Girls Who Code, Little League Baseball, Make-A-Wish Foundation of America, Richmond Animal League, Ronald McDonald House Charities, Special Olympics, and the Spiel Foundation. 
those are going to be the 11 charities I'm giving to, and they've been the 11 charities I've, I wanted to give to. So uh, you can see that at um, www.excaliburzone.com. That's my uh, standard website. And you can see all my links to support me on Patreon, um, my YouTube channel, uh, Twitter account, everything, and uh, mod sauce credits and stuff like that. So uh, visit there. That's going to be my central hub for everything. I'm going to stop using Patreon as my homepage on a lot of things so that um, people are funneled through my actual homepage and see everything that I do. Um, not to mention the fact, I don't know if you guys know this, but anything that's been marked as a podcast on YouTube has been turned into a podcast on my website. So you can actually go and uh, um, subscribe to my website, RSS Feeds, and get podcasts directly to your iPod or your Android or other mobile devices that you listen to, to uh, podcasts on. And I think we're up to uh, episode 13 um, of uh, the FLGS News and Events and a couple of other um, podcasts. Uh, we've only got like one or two, but we're going to be increasing that. Uh, my goal is to, let's get back to the Patreon page. Um, yeah, I plan on doing a lot more than what I have listed here in the next uh, next bit. We're going to have more podcasts, more text-based reviews. We're going to have transcriptions of reviews that I do online because uh, a lot of people like to read instead of watch videos. And I'm also going to try and follow suit with what Edo's been doing with the three-minute um, review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a three- to five-minute review of a game, um, how I felt about it, whether I'd play it. I'm going to use my IGLPR stuff um, that I find it fun. Would I play it again? And would I recommend it to others? So it's going to change for board games. So it's going to be that I have fun, would I play it again, and would I bring it to a group meeting um, to introduce to others? Um, because recommending a game in board game land is a hit or miss. It's a lot the same thing with video games, but uh, a lot of board games are already played in a multiplayer environment. And uh, um, I've played very few solo games. So um, I'm going to be changing up the criteria a bit, but it's gonna, not going to be based on the quality of the materials, the components, or anything. It's based on did I have fun and that's what the rating system is going to be so we'll do three minute to five minute uh, quick rates or micro views uh, reviews micro reviews um, never mind of games and then we'll do an expanded let's learn how to play the game kind of thing um, I'm still waiting on getting some good quality equipment and a table that I can put a boom arm over so that I can record the top of the game as I'm going through it because moving this webcam is going to be troublesome and moving it back and forth back and forth will be a pain unless I can get a boom arm that I can swivel but I'd like to have the multiple camera capability because I can actually record that so there you have it well until next time this has been great uh, enjoy playing games Please support me uh, through Patreon. That would be great. Just one dollar a month, and uh, that gets me um, new equipment, upgraded software, more games, and more time that I can dedicate towards creating content for you. If you could also please like, favorite, and subscribe my videos. Uh, comment on the ones that you like and what you liked about them. Comment on what you'd like to see next, because that will help drive the channel into stuff that you guys want. Um, especially on things like what's a combo? What do you want to see? What combos do you want to see? Um, I think I'm going to be doing one on KikiPod next. We'll have to see how that goes. I need to um, get the basics down, figure out the uh, the judging about it, and then uh, write the um, the scripting of it, and then do the do the show. I know it sounds like I do everything on the fly, but I actually don't. I think about what's going on first, and I usually have some sort of uh, script written out for it. Um, as always, this is Excalibur, and I am out.